Hi, fourth graders. Welcome to your Making Meaning lesson for today. My name is Ms. Tomasho. My students usually call me Ms. T. I teach at Hazel Wolf K-8 school. Um, and I usually teach, well, I teach a third grade classroom this year, but I have taught fourth grade before. I love fourth graders. Um, so I'm really happy to be doing this fourth grade lesson with you. I want to take a moment to welcome you to my classroom. Uh, I know it's, you know, kind of weird that we're doing school from home right now, um, but it's what we've got and we've got to make the best of it and make the most of it. So I have set up a little corner of my daughter's playroom to be my classroom at home. Um, and it's kind of cozy, kind of like it. Hopefully you have a spot in your home also where you're able to really get some learning done and, and do some focused thinking. Um, and so we can be doing some, some learning and some teaching and some thinking together. Okay, so um, I also wanna talk a little bit about turn in talks. Usually when you are in your classrooms, you probably do a lot of talking with your classmates. You might have a partner that you turn and talk to. You might have class discussions, you might have a little bit of both. Um, that's a little bit tricky right now because you are at home and you don't likely have classmates at home with you. Um, so even though you don't have classmates near you, um, you, I still would love it if you could think about things when I ask you to, I mean, think about things all the time, but there will be particular points when I ask you to stop and think. And then I would also like you to actually turn and talk those things as well. You can turn and talk to a family member, a pet, a stuffed animal, an invisible pretend person next to you. However you want to make that work is fine. Um, it's just a really powerful thing to do to expand on your thinking and make your thinking a little bit more clear to really say your thoughts out loud. Um, and I would also like to add that um, you should do that talking in whatever language is most comfortable for you. Uh, so in school, sometimes a teacher will start a lesson by saying, what are you going to do to be responsible for your learning today? And in our school, I'm going to ask you that same question. So just take a moment to think to yourself, what can you do when you're at home during this lesson today? What can you do to be responsible for your own learning? Okay, and then just go ahead and give me a little thumbs up when you got it. Even though I can't see you, I'll know in my heart that you have decided on something that you're going to do to be responsible. Um, the thing that I'm going to try to do is really stay focused on this lesson. Um, I have kids at home with me. I've got my daughter drawing over in another corner of the playroom. And so it can be hard not to turn on my mom brain and my teacher brain at the same time, but I'm going to really try to stay focused on my teacher brain and do my very best with this lesson. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we have been talking about how it's important to identify important ideas in what we're reading, that that helps us really hold on to what's, what's important um, in our texts, and that helps us understand and enjoy what we're reading. Um, it's also important to try to tell the difference between the important ideas and those supporting details, like the facts and the examples and the descriptions or the definitions that go along with those important ideas. Um, understanding the difference between those two things, the important ideas and the supporting details, um, really helps readers understand texts more deeply and get more out of them. So today we're going to identify the important ideas and the supporting details in an excerpt from a picture book of Amelia Earhart. So you'll see that up on the screen next to my head, um, I have one page open from the picture book of Amelia Earhart. And I'm going to just reread you the two paragraphs that are on this page. And then um, we're going to go back and think about what the important ideas are from that paragraph, from those paragraphs. So this is from the part of the story when Amelia Earhart attempts to fly around the world. I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud. In 1937, she planned to fly around the world. When she was told the flight was dangerous, Amelia said, I've wanted to do this flight for a long time. If I should pop off, it will be doing the thing I've always wanted to do. On June 1st, 1937, Amelia Earhart and her navigator, Fred Noonan, began the trip. 
They flew from Miami, Florida to San Juan, Puerto Rico. They flew to South America, then to Africa, India, Burma, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, and New Guinea. They had gone more than three fourths around the world. On July 2nd, they took off from Leh, New Guinea for Howland Island, a tiny island in the vast Pacific Ocean. Okay, so we've reread these two paragraphs. Now um, I'm going to think about what is an important idea in these paragraphs. So I think one important idea. Okay, so I think an important idea from this is actually when she like makes the decision to fly around the world when she makes that plan. So I'm going to go ahead and underline the sentence that talks about that. In 1937, she planned to fly around the world. And I think that's an important idea because it's kind of what the whole rest of this page is about. It's about this trip around the world. And that was a defining moment in her life. So um, I think that's, that's the important idea from these paragraphs. Okay, so remember that the supporting details are the fact the examples and the descriptions that tell more about an important idea. So um, take a look at those paragraphs again and just think and then turn and talk about what you think are the sentences in this paragraph or these paragraphs here that tell more about Amelia's planned trip around the world and talk about why you think these are the supporting details to that important idea. Take a moment to think in your head and then turn and talk. What are the supporting details and why do you think those are the supporting details? Okay, so maybe you said something like, um, I think a supporting detail is that um, the flight happened in 1937, on June 1st, 1937. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. And you think that's a supporting detail because it's a fact that goes along with her plan to fly around the world. Maybe you said something like you think that she was told the flight was dangerous is a supporting detail. And maybe you think that's a supporting detail because it's kind of a description of what that flight is going to be like. It's a description of how dangerous it might be. Maybe you said something else. As long as you can support your thinking with a reason, then you've got a pretty strong case for your thought or your idea. All right, so let's look at what might be a supporting detail or might be an important idea together. Let's look at a sentence together and let's think about whether that sentence is an important idea or a supporting detail and why you think so. So I wonder if I can switch colors. I can. Okay, so um, I've got this sentence here. They flew, I'm gonna try to circle it. They flew to South America, then to Africa, Burma, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, and New Guinea. Do you think that sentence is an important idea or a supporting detail? And why do you think that? Go ahead and think in your head and then talk it out loud. Okay, so maybe you said something like, I think that that is a supporting detail because it kind of explains some details about where she went on her flight, but it doesn't tell like what the whole trip was or what the whole plan was. Um, Cause she also flew to these other places, Miami, Florida, San Juan and Puerto Rico. So this is just a part of that trip. It's just a detail of that trip, which would make it a supporting detail. Maybe you had a different reason that that would be a supporting detail. 
Okay, so we looked at those paragraphs together. We identified an important idea, and then we identified some supporting details as well. So I want to remind you that good readers don't necessarily remember every single thing from what they read, but they do remember what is important. So it is really important to determine what those important ideas are and what the supporting details are. Um, that just helps you identify what's most important to remember, which seals it in your brain and helps your brain muscles grow and helps you become a stronger reader. In the next lesson, we will think about important ideas and supporting details in um, another page of this story. Okay, so now it is time for IDR. I'm going to grab my IDR book. I'm reading this book, Ida B, today. Um, this is a narrative fiction book, so you could read a fiction book, a narrative, or you could read a narrative nonfiction book, um, like a biography. Um, as you read, please practice what we were practicing together on your own in your IDR, which is identifying important ideas and supporting details. Um, and at the end of your IDR, so you should read for at least 30 minutes, at the end of your IDR, go ahead and share one of those important ideas and some of the supporting details that you found with a family member, send a note to your teacher. Um, if you have a packet from the district, you could write it in um, those pages. Um, and, and just really practice this important, important skill of identifying important ideas and supporting details to make you a stronger reader. Even though you're not in school, you can still do this thinking work. You can still be growing your brains and take responsibility for your learning. Okay, thank you so much for sharing this Making Meaning lesson with me, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.